The third week of Nebraska spring practice is wrapped up, and man, oh man, it was as action-packed as ever. We got a bunch of new information throughout coaching interviews and, of course, insider bits. So in today's video, I'm going to break down everything that we learned, including some key breakout players and storylines to watch for the rest of spring practice. So before we get into it, if you like the content, please hit the like button on this video. It is completely free and it helps me out, along with subscribing to the channel. We're on the road to 3,000 subs here on the Wilson and Sports page. We're talking Nebraska football, Nebraska recruiting, instant breakdowns almost every single day. So if you can hit that sub button to support me and Husker football, please do so. But let's just jump right into it, talking about some Nebraska spring practice. And it's weird to say, but we are only two weeks away from the spring game. Everything is starting to intensify and everything means more. So let's go into my number one storyline that we learned over the last couple of days, and this is the offensive line and the improvement that this room has undergone over the last couple of weeks. Matt Rule talked about this early in the week. He said that not only is the starting lineup good, the starting five, and I talked about that as well. I said, man, the starting five is looking great for the Huskers. So not only is that the best it's been in years, but that second rotation, that two deep, is also just as good, so much so that they are pushing the ones to try to take their spots. Um, so this is huge about the O-line. Not only do you feel confident about five guys, I think you feel confident about 11 guys going forward. Not only that, but a lot of these true freshmen who got on campus, Grant Bricks, Matt Rule's talking about him extensively. He said Grant Bricks is balling out. He's playing offensive tackle right now. And this is my favorite thing about Grant Bricks is that he I feel confident about him playing tackle or guard. And he's one of those guys that you might have to watch out for because he might get serious playing time as a true freshman. Not only Grant Bricks, but another true freshman, three-star Gibson Pyle is balling out. He was one of my my guys. I said, this guy's a stud. He was under-recruited. Um, he's a five-star talent. And yeah, he's playing up to a Gibson Pyle. Um, really, really good. So not only the true freshmen, not only two deep, but the second-year players as well. Sam Sledge, Gunnar Gatula. Those guys are also playing really good. So this old line guys buy stock right now. I know a lot of us, again, we're wary because of the last couple years, how bad this O-line has been. The last unit in the Big Ten, last unit in Power Five, it's not going to be like that anymore. And again, talking more about this starting lineup, the guy who has played the best so far in spring ball is Justin Evans Jenkins. Pencil this guy in. He's starting at that guard spot. He's also a flex center. Oh man, this guy's a stud. He's a 30-year player. People don't give him enough love, but that guy is going to be a star. And he's one of those dudes you have to watch out for as a potential all Big Ten caliber guy. So, man, this O-line is looking night and day different than what it was under Scott Frost. And that's a credit to two guys. One, Matt Rule. That was one of his things that he talked about when he got to Nebraska. This O-line was going to look a lot better. And number two, give our props to the man, the myth, the legend, Donovan Riola. Not only is he doing good in the recruiting game like I talked about in yesterday's video, but the development side is there as well. This guy's the real deal. And he was a great hire um, under Scott Frost, who actually hired him. So shout out to Scott for that. So that is the first storyline. Now let's get into the second storyline. And this is all about breakout players. Some more guys that we're going to have to keep our eyes on uh, for the last couple weeks of spring ball going into the spring game. My first guy, like I mentioned earlier, is Justin Evans Jenkins. I mean, just complete stud, complete brawler, has that positional flexibility that Matt Rule loves, um, is going to take that big step in 2024. Number two, I talked about the wide receiver group extensively, but this is a guy that I really haven't touched on, and this is Ja'Cory Barney, true freshman out of Miami, Florida. He was a four-star, highly recruited guy, and the coaching clinic happened a couple weeks ago. A lot of coaches were on campus, and because of that, we got a lot of insider bits from what they were seeing, and that was a name that just kept popping up. Ja'Cory Barney's the guy. Man, he's so athletically gifted. If he can figure stuff off, um, st figure stuff out off the field, like getting the playbook right, um, and getting used to this offense, man, he might be an instant contributor in 2024 at that true freshman spot. So Ja'Cory Barney, man, I feel great about this wide receiver room and the true freshman you got, not just Ja'Cory Barney, but Davon Hall's balling out. You have Isaiah McMorris getting on campus um, soon. Carter Nelson getting on campus soon. So man, we're feeling very good about that. Let's go to the running back room here for breakout guys. 
Quentin Ives got a lot of love for Matt Rule this week, and he said that Ives has one of the bigger potentials on the team, that he feels he could be an NFL guy. He has that higher caliber. Um, he just needs to put it all together. And Quentin Ives, he's more of that complete back, right? He's a, he's sneaky fast, but really he can put his head down, truck a couple of guys who's really productive in high school. Um, so watch out for Quinn Ives to really get some playing time this year. He's just one of those guys that Matt Rule said specifically – Needs to be in every down back. Uh, but like I talked about earlier, Emma Johnson's your guy in that room. No question about it. Every single week, Emma Johnson's getting love. So a couple more guys to watch out for. The edge rusher spot. Chief Borders and MJ Sherman taking big leaps. I feel really good about them um, coming off the edge, getting to the quarterback. I'm super athletically gifted, as good as it gets. And both those guys are in their fourth and fifth years of college. Two more guys for you. Riley Van Poppel, second-year player, burned his red shirt last year, balled out as a true freshman at that nose tackle spot. Riley Van Poppel, who was a four-star prospect out of high school, is so good that I think he could beat out Nash, um, potentially get some of his playing time going into the fall. And all love to Nash. I think he's a stud. But Riley Van Poppel's an NFL guy. I don't know if Nash is an NFL guy. Just with the way he's built, with the lack of production over his career, obviously, he's producing a little bit late. Let's put it in terms like this. Nash's second year versus Riley Van Poppel's second year is going to be light years different. Riley Van Poppel is going to be one of the better nose tackles in the country. Nash wasn't even playing on the field. So buy Riley Van Poppel stock. Um, he played great last year. He's going to play great this year. And he's this guy who's just just doing some great in his spring ball. Um, and right now, as good as the O-line is, the D-line's actually playing better throughout practice. So that is my second to last guy. One more guy before I get into my last storyline. I've talked about him before. It's Jalen Lloyd. Jalen Lloyd, it's time to pencil him in as your starter. Give him respect. Um, this is your second best receiver on the team. And it's not even debatable. Obviously, Jamal Banks is your number one. Jalen Lloyd is your second. He's starting. <laughs> I mean, so athletically gifted. Last year, he made plays just because of his athletic ability alone. The fact that he runs a legit 4-2 speed and is a track guy. Now he's putting it all together. Um, and every single day he's making plays. Every single day I'm hearing another thing about him. He's their second guy. Expect Isaiah Nair potentially be that third guy. Malachi Coleman, Demetrius Bell. Um, but again, you feel good about him being your second best receiver. Jalen Lloyd, pencil it in. That is another guy. I, I mean, I, I talk about him every single week. But Jalen Lloyd, give him the respect he deserves. He is playing. He's been playing great. So those are some key breakout players to keep your eyes on. Now let's get to my third and final storyline, and this is the biggest one I learned this week. And this is something that I love about Matt Rule. He gave a wake-up call to the fan base. He said this, and I quote, The highlights aren't the reason we haven't been to a bowl game in six years. It's the lowlights. Matt Rule gets it. Every single year we do this song and dance where we're watching the highlights on Nebraska Twitter, Nebraska Instagram. Oh my gosh, Adrian Martinez, he threw a 60-yard uh, dime, right? Oh, Casey Thompson's looking very good. We're doing the same thing this year with Dylan Riola. And we're all getting hyped up. Oh, we're going to win 8, 9, 10 games this year, right? But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything because we still have low lights. And it brings me to my conversation that football is a lot like golf, right? As a golfer, right? And you can be really bad and you'll still have a good shot every now and then. Okay. The same thing says with a football team, right? You can be a terrible football team and you can make really good plays. However, when you get better as a football team, when you get better as a golfer, it's not the bad, the good plays that keep happening more, even though they are, it's the bad stuff. The bad stuff gets worse or excuse me, the bad stuff ha stops happening as much. And when it does happen, it's not as bad, right? So, you know, instead of, like in golf terms, right? When you shank a ball, right? When you get better as a player, not only do those shanks happen less, but when you're shaking it, it's not as bad, right? It's, oh, it's going a lot farther, right? Same thing with football. We got to clean up the bad stuff, clean up the low lights. And when you get better as a team, not only do the low lights stop happening as much, but they become less bad. And to put this in one more perspective for you to understand this, I love, I mean, okay. I don't want to say that I love Iowa football. I don't like Iowa football. But Iowa is historically one of the luckiest teams. You want to know why they're so lucky? When you're good, you get lucky. When you're disciplined, you get lucky. And then your low lights get not, ha they don't happen as much. That's why Iowa always gets these breaks because they're so disciplined. 
Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But o- overall, Matt Rule understands that those highlights don't mean anything. That when we're watching Dale Ryle, it doesn't mean anything because he got to clean up the low lights. And it all goes back to being disciplined as a football team. It all goes back to, um, again, teaching the fundamentals, teaching the X's and O's, getting everybody accustomed to the offense and the defense. Um, and that's what builds good football teams, not only throughout the country, but in the Big Ten specifically. Again, Iowa, Northwestern, Wisconsin, they are not the most talented team. They don't have five stars, four stars everywhere. But you know what they do have? They're disciplined as heck. They don't commit penalties, and they don't have low lights. And when they do, they're not as bad as our low lights. And we can speak from experience. Our low lights have been pretty, pretty bad. We've reached rock bottom. So Matt Rule understands that. And overall, he's going to fix fix this and fix the culture, and he understands that highlights don't matter. So hopefully that makes sense. But that was the biggest thing. And I was so pumped up to hear that about Matt Rule because he gets it, and he understands. And he understands the Kool-Aid doesn't matter if we don't uh, figure out you know first and second down rather than third down. So that was a big thing for me. Let me know what you thought about um, this week specifically for Nebraska football, man. Some of the key breakout players, somebody that you're keeping your eye on, somebody maybe I didn't mention. Let me know all that down below. Have a great week, everybody. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the video. And as always, folks, go Big Red, go Metro, and see you in the next one.